Okay, let's get uh, started. Welcome. Uh, we are talking about cardinality and disasters today. So who, who doesn't love a disaster movie? Uh, my name is Brian Borum. I work for a company called Weaveworks. I'm Chris Marchbanks. I work for a company called Splunk. And yeah, so. Um, yeah, so, uh, so we're making a disaster movie. Um, and the first disaster is the keyboard doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so. Great. Uh, yeah, so colorful pictures are essential to any movie. And um, uh, what happens if you, if you do a Google image search for cardinality, uh, you get a, a bunch of really, really dull like mathematical diagrams. And um, so that wasn't any good. And uh, this is, this is um, my uh, contribution. Uh, it's a cardinal bird. So go, go cardinals. Um, OK, so who are we and, and why are we talking about cardinality? I'll, I'll go first. Um, uh, so as I mentioned, I, I work at, uh, at Weaveworks. And, um, one of the things we have uh, a, a product offering is, is a, a Prometheus as a service. Uh, you know, it's part of our Weave Cloud offering. And um, uh, what we let people do is um, fire up uh, agents on their cluster which are uploading metrics, time series data, to our back end. Um, and anyone can do this. You can, you can uh, you know, take out a free trial. Um, so basically, we, we see, uh, we've seen everything. We've seen um, all manner of random data and misconfigured Prometheus and uh, Kubernetes and everything. Everything comes in if you open your service to anyone who comes up, shows up on the internet. Yep. As I said, I'm Chris, working at Splunk Cloud. So we use Prometheus internally for our Splunk Cloud, and just as we've spun up new services, ran into different cardinality things, stressed the system in interesting ways, and really just contributed back a fair amount of things. And it's a good time, so now. Yeah. So, oh, not too many. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, why, why, are we, um, why are we talking about cardinality? Uh, well, first of all, we could have a, a show of hands. Who, who thinks they might have had a cardinality disaster? And, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So you just came for, like, sympathy? Or <laughs> problem shared? Um, uh, yeah, so you may have seen this uh, message in the docs, either before or after you had the disaster. Um, and this is in the Prometheus uh, documentation. Um, and it, it, says, uh, it says, don't do it, right? Um, and so that's, that's Prometheus. Uh, I, as mentioned on the slide, maintainer of Cortex, which is a, a scalable variant of Prometheus. That's how we run our back end. Um, the, uh, you know, when we talk to people at, at M3 and uh, other, other metric systems, and basically everyone runs into this problem. So it's, it's pretty generic. Um, uh, you do have to worry about cardinality. So how much is too much? In terms of Prometheus land, there's a couple of rules of thumb that we've developed. One is try not to query more than 100,000 series at any time. You can write to more than that, but trying to query it gets really slow. By 200,000 series, a single query is taken five seconds. Eventually, they just start timing out or get rejected by Prometheus and UX kind of sucks there. And then a single Prometheus, it can handle about 10 million unique series before really the operational load becomes too much. Now, that's a fair amount of series. That's a, that's a lot of data. So you've got some leeway most of the time. But once that carnality starts kicking in, like you'll start seeing startup times taking 15 minutes, 20 minutes if you lose an instance. It's a long time. I'll typically see heap on the order of hundreds of gigabytes. It's beefy boxes. Like it, and then, you know, a 2x increase anymore. That's really bad when you're at a 200 gigabyte heap or something like that. 
And then where you normally see carnality issues being manifested in Prometheus is commonly it's memory usage. You'll see big spikes in memory usage or just more than you would expect out of the box. So that's sort of one of those things. I'm sure you'll see it a couple times in our slides. But first off, I'm going to pass it over to Brian for the first carnality disaster of our talk. Yeah, so scene act one of the movie. Um, uh, and this is a story about alerts. Um, you know, in, in Prometheus, you can set up uh, alerting rules that I, you know, I want you to uh, send something to pager duty when this goes over this number or something like that. Um, so uh, we're monitoring our, um, our, our service that we run. And um, this is kind of the, the sign that, that we're in some kind of trouble. The, uh, uh, so the bit, of, the bit of cortex that executes the rules um, is same, same code as Prometheus, but it's, it's in a, a standalone uh, subpart of, of the system called the ruler. Uh, and this thing was growing and growing and growing over hours, and it doesn't, it doesn't look good, right? The, uh, uh, the prognosis uh, for this process is, is terminal. Um, so, uh, so we tried to dive in, and uh, you know, what do you do if, you, if you've got excess um, memory utilization? You, uh, maybe take a, a profile, heap, heap profile, and, and try and figure out where all the memory's going. And uh, that wasn't entirely useful. It, it basically said it was doing a lot of queries. And um, couldn't really figure it out from there. But uh, you know, given a few hints, um, we, we did uh, eventually narrow it down and, and figure out uh, what was happening. So, um, so one of our, our customers had, uh, I've, I've changed specifics of the naming to protect the, the details. Um, but, uh, but let's say they, 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 had a, they had a particular interest in a concept of an invalid tag. And they set up a um, alerting rule if, the, uh, if, the, if there were any you know, greater than zero invalid tag. Um, the trouble was uh, they, they had uh, 40,000 uh, of those time series. And one alert like that will generate, um, uh, one alerting rule like that will generate one alert for every time series that matches. You'll, you'll get an entry in the alerts table with all the same labels as, as what you've queried to generate the alert. And in fact, not just one, you get two. Um, Prometheus generates uh, one time series which is the alert and another one which is a, a, a kind of a state storage uh, thing to do with the internals of Prometheus. Um, so, uh, so this ended up the cause of our, our memory bloat that it was trying to write 80,000 samples uh, to the store every 15 seconds. Um, the underlying data was, was kind of turning over, not just, they weren't just stable series. So these people generated uh, 300,000 alerts um, in, in a few hours. Uh, so that was, that was kind of painful. Um, the good news is, well, if you like, uh, Prometheus has a fixed sized uh, channel down which it delivers the alerts on their way to pager duty. Um, that channel overflowed and, and in fact dropped almost all of the 300,000 alerts. So I would not have been uh, you know, wanting to be the owner of that, that phone that was <laughs> receiving uh, 300,000 notifications. Um, so, uh, so what can you do about it? Um, yeah, do be careful with the, with the query uh, in your alerts. Um, so one, one way to alert uh, might, might be just to, to count how many of these things there are and, and alert if there's more than zero of them. So um, then the, the person who gets the, the page can go figure out what the detail is. Um, if you want some detail in your alerts, you might want to consider a, a call like top K, which, which will give you the, the top, in this case, the top 10. Um, so you could generate 10 alerts if, you know, if, if some of the detail is useful, uh, top 1,000 if 1,000 of them are useful, but, but please don't, don't do 300,000. Um, so that's a uh, uh, real one. Let's move on. Yeah, so act two. It's this time, using Prometheus, monitoring a bunch of stuff. It's all going well. And then suddenly, 
we find there are entire error messages being put in as label values. And not just error messages, 100 kilobyte long error messages. This is an example, not particularly useful. It goes on for many more lines. I just truncated it because that was all the tiny, tiny text I wanted on this slide. Anyone have an idea of what happens to Prometheus when you give it many unique 100 kilobyte label values? Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> all of it goes down. <laughs> so we saw, looking back on it, a nice climb in memory usage. It was somewhat slow. We over-provisioned these. This particular instance has 200 gigabytes of heap and started around 100 and over the course of a couple days went to 200 gigabytes and maybe we should have had an alert on that, but, you know, oops. <laughs> and then everything oomed. <laughs> And memory-wise, because it's memory, you run HA pairs of Prometheus. In this case, we had three of them. But it's memory. They're all scraping the exact same things, which mean they have the same data. Memory usage is the same. And they all oom at the same time. Luckily, we have a dead man switch alert. We stopped getting our alerts. We went, what? Oh, got our other alert. This is bad. Started debugging into it. and. This was hard to solve. It was like, this was our only clue. It was like, what the, what the heck? There's a ton of memory usage. And we found, like, OK, going around, the, the thing we found was symbol table size. It grew from 5 gigabytes to something on the order of 60 gigabytes before everything crashed. What does that mean? What is a symbol table in Prometheus? Yeah, what is the symbol table in Prometheus? I, like, like, it's kind of a weird, like, like what is this metric? I don't, I don't know. So the symbol table is actually a very important thing when dealing with carnality issues. It is a table that in every single Prometheus block, there is, basic, it, there is a list of all the unique strings seen in all of the data in that block. And the symbol table size is the sum of all those unique strings over all of the blocks in your Prometheus system. So effectively, it's how many unique strings you have in your system. Very relevant for basically, for almost all carnality issues where there's lots of unique strings being generated. So super useful. Learned about it as part of this debugging. <laughs> Did not know about it beforehand. But great. Like, what do, what do you do about that? How do you find that? That's a bit, bit trickier. And I have a reasonable example later on for some tools. We actually had to commit some tools back into Prometheus just to figure out where that error label was actually coming from. But demo that at the end. And, but what to do about this? One, obvious, don't put raw messages in your label values. It's a bad idea. Use an enum, use some types, and then if you need the raw label message, log it. I don't know what you're doing with 100 kilobyte error messages. That, I don't want that in my logs either. Like That, that just hurts a lot. <laughs> um, second thing you can do is it might take a little bit to you know, change that. So we had a. It, what I have to do in the meantime is put in a relabeling rule to just drop the metric. Once you can actually identify the metric, put in a relabeling rule, drop the metric. You can't just isolate out and drop the specific label because then you might have multiple metrics collapse into one, which is or multiple series collapse into one. Not a great situation. So you have to drop the whole the whole thing. And it's a key thing here, like. Those messages were coming from Istio. Istio is a very well-used, well-tested program. It has bugs in it. This can happen to any program out there. I would like to thank the Istio team. We reported this issue, and they fixed it within a week. And a new version up and running it was, it was good. So very responsive from them. And finally, one other key thing about the symbol table is it doesn't go away until that block is deleted or the data is deleted. So that 60 gigabyte that's sitting there, you either have to delete all that data or you have to wait for it to age out. And that's very painful. So I definitely recommend keeping an eye on that and not letting it grow too big, especially if you run a system like Thanos where you have to lo load all historical data. It gets really, really big. So yeah, that is Act 2. Yeah. Quite interesting. Over to uh, back to Brian. Uh, my next uh, next next we turn to buckets. Um, 
I'm, I'm seeing a, a, well, a lot of blank stares, maybe a couple of nods. Uh, so let me just explain um, uh, Prometheus histogram, uh, how, how that works. Histograms are really useful for um, seeing uh, something like the, the 95th percentile of a metric, uh, you know, compared to the, the median, compared to the mean. Um, really powerful feature of, of Prometheus. And, and the way it works is you set up, when you define the metric in your code, you set up uh, buckets. And each one of them is a counter. So Prometheus starts uh, counting uh, the samples that fit in each one of the buckets. And, and from that, from those counters, it can work out, uh, or at least give you an estimate for the, the percentiles. So in my first picture here, uh, I have a, a bucket at uh, everything up to 20 milliseconds. Well, there, there actually weren't any of those in this example. Everything up to 40 milliseconds, there was one of those. Everything up to 80 milliseconds, a bunch of dots in that bucket. Everything up to 160 milliseconds, and everything above that. Um, so that's five buckets. Uh, so this is in my histogram definition that I'm using for this example. So if you work with a histogram like this, um, what you might find is, is, is uh, when you do the queries, um, the, value, the value you get out of it will just kind of jump around. Uh, between the 40 millisecond point and the 80 millisecond point, because almost all the data is in that bucket. So you might, you might find there's no definition um, in that range. So, so no problem, uh, add a bucket. Um, in this case, I've, I've added one at 60 milliseconds. Now we get that extra, extra definition uh, in that range where there was a lot of density. Um, now, there, there might be another reason to use a, the, this kind of data collection, which is to check your service level agreements. Uh, or the, the thing you would check is the SLI, and you would compare it against your internal SLO, and you might have to pay out on your SLA. Everyone's read the book, right? Um, so, uh, so let's imagine our SLO uh, is 100 milliseconds. Um, well, we can't. Uh, answer the question with those buckets, so um, so better put one in. Um, put in a bucket at 100 milliseconds. Uh, maybe you find you don't have much definition at the top end. Maybe you know you want to kind of know whether whether those ones that are above 160 milliseconds are like a little bit above or a lot above, and so you add more buckets there and you buckets, 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 and uh, before. Uh, before long, um, you're, you're pretty much swimming in buckets. Uh, so the, um, uh, the other thing that, that, that uh, you need to watch out for is the multiplicative effect. Um, so you might have, uh, let's say, uh, 10 buckets. You know, that's a very modest number. Um, but then you, you put some labels on it. You, you're measuring all of those buckets per um, entry point into your system, uh, and you're actually measuring them on all the different nodes, or maybe all the different pods um, in the system. And, and so, let's say you had 10 buckets and uh, 20 entry points and 100 pods, and oh, maybe now we want to separate out the error codes that can come back. And there's like seven different error codes, and that all those numbers multiply up, and uh, and and before long. Uh, Prometheus explodes because you know you've you've given it um, 10 million series. Um, so the disaster, the real life disaster, I just want to highlight uh, is this little uh, snippet here. Um, this is real code from KubeDNS, um, where they define linear buckets is a is a Prometheus helper function. Uh, and, it, and it has a start and an increment and a count. And so they, excellent resolution. Um, the, you know, they had a bucket at 10 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, 500 buckets they gave you. Never mind. Uh, somebody fixed it. Um, I, I happen to be able to find that PR. Um, 
And uh, I switched it out to um, exponential buckets, which uh, you know goes up by multiple, um, which probably makes more sense a lot of the time. You probably you probably want the fine detail at the low end, and then you know if if your DNS request takes ten seconds, then you probably don't care whether it was ten or twelve or you know it uh, you you lost hope at that point. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, there you go. That's Act Three. Back to Chris. Yeah. So Act Four. This is the final disaster of our presentation. So imagine you're a team. You're working on a service. You're instrumenting everything in Prometheus. It's going great. Except there's a service that like the libraries they're using. They sort of support Prometheus, but not really. They're more designed for this old style. Dot dot dot. Notation. Well, OK, but I need some tags in there, so put them in the names. Sure, like they're there, but at least you can do stuff. So you get metrics that look like my service, blah, some routes, some tenants, status codes, etc. And then you end up doing queries like, oh, I need to query on across these dimensions. Oh, no, now I'm doing regex matches on the metric names, and it, it's very slow. Uh, please not actually do this. So what happens when you have hundreds of thousands of series with different metric names? Each individual metric name doesn't have too much cardinality, but overall cardinality of your system is still the same. Like All of those unique label values are still there. And what now happens is the Prometheus UI breaks completely. There's been some improvements. It might not break completely anymore, but for a while, it, like my whole just browser crashed on me every time I tried to load Prometheus. And the reason for this is Prometheus and the Grafana UIs, if you're trying to like put in a new query into the Grafana UI, they pull back every single metric name for the type ahead completion. It's a nice tool. I don't know all the names of every metric in my system. Like that, That's way too much cognitive load. Type it in, start getting there. Great, like that's a really nice feature. But some systems have two million metric names. And what's the number on here? I think it is one meg, some 121 megabytes of data that you have to pull back to just to get your metric names back from the server. That's a lot of that's a lot of data to pull back to load a simple little UI. It's a lot of JSON. Yes. <laughs> A lot of JSON. <laughs> so clearly, in good news, we're not the only ones with who have come across this issue. Um, and there's actually, I think, I've seen three currently open Prometheus issues around this behavior and what to do about it. Hopefully, some of those will get worked on before too long. But yeah, so do not put label values into your metric names. Not a good idea. Lots of different inefficiencies. Um, this can also happen from systems that are misconfigured. You might have a statsd exporter or a JMX exporter. You just grab a regex and put it into the name, and oops, now I have weird data in Prometheus. Uh, this is another case of label names are forever. That You pulled it back from all the blocks in your database. So if you do this once, you're going to have to wait for your retention to age out for them to disappear from type ahead, or you have to delete the entire series. Uh, with the admin API. But there are ways around this. Hopefully, you can fix that at the source. But if not, you can write some great relabeling rules to uh, parse out all the label values and then put them into labels themselves and then change the name to something more sane. Uh, I think we have probably 400 lines of relabeling configs to do this at one point. <laughs> it's a good time. So yeah. Next off, back to Brian for yeah, intro was, of how to that troubleshoot. Yeah, was a lot of fun uh, talking about the uh, the good times um, in the in the trenches in the SRE trenches. Um, the uh, so yeah, how uh, w what we wanted to do is leave you with um, uh, some tips and ideas for for what to um, practicality pra practically do. In the in the system. Oh yeah. So that's that's uh, 
that's, that's my message. It's unpleasant. Um, and uh, uh, what are the, the techniques? I, I, I have to say, I, I came into this with uh, one of my favorite techniques um, uh, is this query, which I, I, can, I can type by heart. Um, I don't know, no, nobody else recognizes this. Okay, this, this is, uh, so, so working from the inside out, we, um, we have a query with no metric name, so it's just curly brackets, nothing, nothing before that. Uh, and then what's inside the curly brackets is we're gonna match on name. Um, and we're gonna match it with a, a, a regex, uh, which is dot plus for reasons. Um, and, then, uh, and then we count those by name. Uh, and that way we could, uh, we could find out um, what the, the highest cardinality is. But in big clusters, that stops working. If I try to do that query on our Prometheus instances, it just sits there and spins and spins. And if I'm lucky, it returns in 58 seconds when our timeout is one minute. And if I'm not lucky or on the not my smaller instances, it's, it's never going to happen. So what do you do instead on these bigger instances? Well, there's a few questions I like asking myself. First, how many series are in memory? Just gives me a good snapshot. There's a metric Prometheus exports for that. Prometheus TSDB head series. Nice and helpful. Typical, that's where I'll typically make sure I try and keep under that 10 million mark. If it goes much above 10 million, probably in for a bad time before too long. And second, talked about a bit earlier, how much space do my unique strings take? As I said, TSDB symbol table size, very helpful, bit mysteriously named, but now you know what it does. Third, I really like looking at how many samples are scraped by job. There's a internal metric called scrape samples scraped that every target tells you how many, and then you can sum it by job. You can also do, um, there's also a scraped, sa scraped series added that you can do a sum over time to see churn. And these really, instead of doing full names and the name matches, this really looks into, well, now I actually have a name. So it's a much smaller data set, and this will return at least it points you towards the job. And now you could plug in, if you have a couple jobs you're curious about, you can plug those into Brian's query, and that'll probably return. And finally, as of version 2.14, there's which is, a- Which is just out, right? Which is just out. Very new. Week and a half ago, week ago is when I released it as a non-release candidate. There's a TSDB status page built into the UI that will quickly tell you many, many different metrics. So now let's take an example of, well, you don't always have to have carnality disasters to learn more about the carnality of your system. So last week, you know, I'm prepping for a KubeCon talk. It's like, well, I gotta have something. So I looked at what the carnality of my system is and was like, whoa, that symbol table size is still like gig. In this environment, I think it was four gigs in a different environment. Where the heck's that coming from? Well, now, Prometheus UI comes with this nice page. You just click status runtime information, and there's a bunch of sections. One of those sections is label names with highest cumulative label value length. So catchy this will name. Catchy name. Catchy name. <laughs> <laughs> what it's telling you is what is the label that has the most values? This is what we had to add to, uh, at that time, was a TSDB analyzed command line tool to figure out where those error messages were coming from. Like, what, what label has all of this symbol size? Well, last week we found there was one metric, or one label, log file, with two orders of magnitude more data than anything else in our cluster. As you can see, one of those other things is the container ID, which is literally just a shaw. <laughs> like, <laughs> So that's a lot of data, two orders of magnitude more. So, great, okay, that gives me a great place to start. Now instead of an empty name regex match, I can do a count of where log file does, isn't empty. So tell me what all series come back that have this log file. There are two of them. They're both from mtail. Uh, for those of you who don't know, mtail is a program that will monitor log files, and you can do some regex matching on the log entries, and it'll convert them into metrics that you can then scrape. So for things that maybe don't expose 
error errors as Prometheus metrics. You can use mtail to grep for these error me metrics or request metrics, whatever you really want, just, just some regex matching, and export them as metrics. Super useful for some cases. That said, it's looking at 50,000 different log files. Seems like a lot. Mtail in our system works on three workloads. <laughs> we're scraping 50, or we're, we're following 50,000 files for three workloads of container logs. I don't know if you've seen container log paths in Kubernetes. It goes something like var log containers, pod name, container name, no, namespace, container name, container uid dot log. It's pretty, pretty long. That, that could definitely explain why log file is taking up so much space. So made mtail only scrape the log files that we actually cared about. Reduce this to 79 instead of 50,000. Pretty good. <laughs> and this is the result. You can see on this graph, reduce the number of containers. We are climbing, climbing, climbing. And then symbol table size starts decreasing. As I said, you have to wait and wait until blocks actually age out, so it takes a few days. But like now we are, we have, in this cluster I believe is 50% or so, or I guess it's a 30% decrease so far. In one of our other clusters, the symbol table just over the last four days has decreased by almost 50%. Like that's a big difference just for something that was misconfigured, and these cardinality metrics pointed towards this misconfigured thing. So what I'd like to leave you with is, what carnality can you find in your systems? Try out these tools. See what, see what they look like. See what you can find. And when a carnality disaster strikes you, you'll be better prepared to find the culprit. That's all. Thank you very, very much. What questions do you have? Do we uh, raise your hand and we can get the microphone to this one over there? On, uh, while we're waiting for the microphone to arrive, let me remind you to uh, fill in the feedback uh, on this uh, sketch uh, website and go. So how do you deal with uh, one of those cardinality disasters that bleeds into something like a long-term storage like Cortex or Thanos? <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, so, so uh, one of the things about Cortex is because we have all this history of, of random people sending us random data on the internet, we actually uh, have a whole suite of soft limits, uh, which are actually configurable per tenant. Um, so, you know, what you'll find if you're, if, uh, probably someone in the room's tried this already. If, you know, if you sign up for a free trial and start sending us a million series, you, we'll, you just, we'll send you errors. Um, so that's the Cortex answer. We have, like, limits everywhere. Um, the Thanos answer. Delete, so, delete your data. Yeah, that's the only that's the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> you, Sad you get, face. Sadly, the deep dive of Thanos is going on right now, so I don't think there's going to be any super Thanos experts in here. But <laughs> okay, yeah, good question. Do we have another? Yeah. Yeah, great. You talked about TSDB command line tool. What tool is that? So there's a TSDB analyze tool that is it is included with. The, in the Prometheus repo. I don't think it is currently in the Prometheus Docker file, though. Um, but if you pull down the tar file, it will be in there. Uh, it is soon to be integrated into Prom Tool as well. So within the next couple of release cycles, it'll just be in Prom Tool. And then you'll actually have it in your container that you're running as well. Um, yep. So beyond code reviews, is there any way to like enforce or test or policies to write to catch this before it makes it in? That's a great question. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, ideally in the integration test uh, of your CI, uh, you would um, spin up a, a realistic uh, instance and then hit the slash metrics endpoint and, and do some analysis on it. Um, hands up, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good. Do that. <laughs> There is discussion of adding some more limits into Prometheus itself, such as don't allow 100,000 kilobyte error mess label values. Um, so that is 
something we are discussing at least, and hopefully we'll make it into core Prometheus at some point, just some protections around this. There are also some things around, there's a scrape limit you can put onto scrape jobs in Prometheus to limit no target can have in this job can have more than 500 series or whatever your limit, and that can help out with this a little bit, but there's still, like, if you're running 500 instances, that's still a ton, <laughs> like, so it doesn't fix everything. Uh, I had a quick question about the, uh, the name name query. With the uh, dot plus, I mean, there are blank named metrics that we shouldn't care about? So there are, well, let me, let me I, answer, yeah. for, first of all, I said it's dot plus for a reason. Uh, and the reason is if, if that reg regex matches the empty string, then it just doesn't work at all. Uh, and uh, it sounds like maybe it wouldn't work for you exactly the way I wrote it, and um, sorry. Yeah. You can manage to get empty named metrics into Prometheus? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd, I'd be very impressed if you could get an empty metric name into Prometheus. Now, yeah, blank, I don't, I don't blank know label, that I could have. <laughs> Blank label names have been rejected by Prometheus since 2.0. Yeah. We, we used to get them prior to 2.0. Yeah, so is it like the uh, TSDB like series count metric um, that you can use to track like the, how many series you have in Prometheus, would putting an alert on that protect you from some of these, like I know it probably wouldn't protect you from like a hundred kilobyte label size. Yeah. Um, but, or would it, I don't, so yes. that counts as a separate series when you have? Yeah, um, yes, you can set alerts on these. The ones that are Prometheus metrics, um, yeah, by all means, experiment with what's a good alert mm -hmm. level for you. Okay. Yep, you can definitely do that. Any more? One more? What are we doing for time? No, oh, we have time. We are one minute over time, so we, last question. We, we don't have time, yeah, go on, one last one. <laughs> How do you clean the symbol table? Uh, sorry, say it again. You repeat? How, How do you clean the symbol table? Clean it? Yeah, so, the, the, so there's two options for cleaning the symbol table. One is delete a block, not great. The second is you can figure out which series are causing the large symbol table, and there's a TSDB admin API that allows you to delete based on matchers. So you will have to enable that API, go in, very carefully only delete the certain ones from the specific time range that you care about, and then you have to do a second API call to say, do a compaction now. And, the, and then the compaction process will work on that data and remove it permanently from your database, at which point this, it, the symbol table is for those strings, is entries, for, entries for those strings are no longer necessary and you will be in a better spot. That's the safer way to do it. Be careful. It's an admin API for a reason. <laughs> all right, well thank you all for coming. Have a good evening.